A team of U.S. scientists announced this week the completion of the maize genome, the entire set of genetic information that encodes the corn plant. Scientists from Cold Spring Harbor Laboratory joined with colleagues from Washington University in St. Louis and Arizona and Iowa State Universities in this multi-million dollar project, almost four years in the making. I discussed the significance of the project with Cold Spring Harbor researchers Doreen Ware and Rob Martinson. Uh, Cold Spring Harbor played a very important role in the sequencing itself. Uh, Dick McCombie uh, was involved in finishing uh, much of the, uh, many of the backs that we used uh, in, the, in the process. And Doreen Ware and her group uh, did most of the annotation and, and, and much of the uh, assembly and, and uh, repeat analysis and so on, which is crucial for a genome which is very complicated. This is the most complex plant genome that's yet been sequenced. So maize is, or corn is a very important agricultural crop in this country. It represents $47 billion in revenue last year. And last year, 12 billion bushels of of corn went to feeding livestock. And more and more we're using this corn as an alternative energy fuel in the form of ethanol. The objective was to focus on the relatively unique portions of the genome that are usually going to be associated with the things that we think about as the protein coding genes. And our objective then was using this template to predict those protein coding genes. And in order to do that, we actually use a series of information from other species, everything including protein coding information from humans to model plants like Arabidopsis, and we have to overlay that on the existing sequence. It's interesting because from my perspective, I actually have two farms. I have the farm where I plant my corn in the field, and I have the farm that actually represents the computer farm where I send all the information and I run the computes. So in, in our case today, Biology is really associated with the necessity of managing the sequence as well as integrating additional information on that sequence. Cold Spring Harbor's participation in the project was in fact the continuation of a century of maize genetics here at the lab. Working in a small cornfield on the banks of the harbor, George Schull showed that crossing two inbred lines of corn produces a hybrid with uniformly high yield. In fact, all modern hybrid corn today is produced using the method Shull first outlined. I talked with Nobel laureate James Watson about Shull's discovery. Well, I think in a true sense, corn genetics have, uh, you know, really started in Cold Spring Harbor when uh, uh, George Shull came here, probably almost at the very start, 1905, and uh, started growing uh, uh, corn, and there already had been corn breeders. Uh, but the, the big thing he did was to cross two of them and uh, find the product grew better. One of the difficulties of sequencing the maize genome was large quantities of highly repetitive DNA, segments of DNA that are repeated over and over, perhaps thousands of times. Half a century after Shull, and starting out in his same cornfield, Another Cold Spring Harbor researcher, Barbara McClintock, showed that most of this repeated DNA is created by movable genetic elements, or transposons. And this ear of corn actually demonstrates, and I've got it here in fact, it demonstrates a chromosome breakage caused by transposable elements. And um, you'll see a much better version of this in the maze poster. Uh, but what's uh, illustrated here is the presence of a transposon called dissociation, or DS, uh, which is causing the breakage of chromosome 9 at a very specific location. And when that chromosome is broken, it results in a spot of color uh, on, the, uh, on the kernel. Uh, that that uh, breakage is controlled by another transposon called activator. And the relationship between those two classes of transposons really uh, defined the discovery. And this ear is, in fact, the position of DS on the, on, on the chromosome in this ear represents the first recorded transposition of a transposable element. So it's a really precious ear. This ear is 60 years old this fall. It was harvested uh, actually probably about a month ago, uh, but 60 years ago. So uh, it's, a, it's a very special ear. All the people who knew Barbara uh, knew she was probably right. Uh, but it wasn't until, uh, you know, jumping genes began to be found in uh, in yeast uh, here, uh, and uh, we had uh, recombinant DNA, 
And uh, so Barbara, you know, her jumping genes were seen through recombinant DNA methods. Uh, I guess by 1980, and Barbara went to Stockholm for the Nobel Prize in 1983 uh, for work which uh, it started 40 years earlier. Although the early pioneers like Scholl and McClintock didn't have access to the genomic tools of today, they actually foresaw many key elements of the genome, which are only now being confirmed. The completion of the maize genome marks the beginning of a second century of maize research at Cold Spring Harbor. Barbara absolutely adored molecular genetics. She thought it was just fantastically exciting and, and couldn't get enough of it. Um, however, I have to say that, speaking from my perspective, I'm not sure they would have been surprised by that much in terms of the structure of the genome. They knew the chromosomes were very large. I think maize geneticists are, are excited just to see all the genes in order along the chromosome as they would have been a hundred years ago. Um, these days, of course, we can associate many different types of trait uh, with genes, and we can map them genetically, and having that trait associated with specific sequences in the genome is, is enormously valuable, both for uh, more uh, theoretical geneticists like myself, as well as for breeders, uh, who can now identify their traits with incredible accuracy uh, really, really quickly. Uh, as genes along the chromosome, and I think that's really been the most excitement for most people.